election. We're in a new month. They said it wouldn't happen. They say we couldn't do it. They said we were just a football school. Nate Otis, hold my beer. Bama, men's basketball is danced into the final four of March Madness. For the first time in school history, Eli told you, if Bama got to the final four, I'm getting my T-shirt. I will calmly go to cardiac arrest. You ain't got to hear from me no more. Well, got the T-shirt. Did not go into cardiac arrest, thank God. But happy though, thrilled, Bama! Final four, first time, program history. With that being said, you're rocking and rolling right here on a Monday. Hottest show in the streets! Giving you your Bama football news in my own words, George truly. Stephen Smith of TDA, happy to be here with you. We bring you the show from the magic city of Birmingham. We stream this to you on YouTube. Speaking of the channel, you know what time it is. You smash that subscribe button right now. You tap subscribe, you get locked in, you get locked on to nonstop Bama football content coming at you straight out the gate. You tap the notification bell as well. You smash the like button. You get those like numbers up there. You miss nothing when it comes down to your Crimson Tide. Daily Super Chat go $100. Daily Super Chat go 100 bucks right there. We appreciate you. There's a lot to dive into today. A lot to dive into. This is a day month for you as Bama fans. The spring game of the 13th of this month at Bryant Denny. 3 p.m. Central Time, ESPN has the call on the game. But we want to hear from you on tonight's show. You can do this by calling 205-448-1358. For number to call in to let your voice be made known, 205-448-1358. And one more time, 205-448-1358. Well, folks, without further ado, we jump to topic number one of the conversation this is about the offensive line. A very interesting development is happening right now in spring football for Alabama, primarily at the center position. Has Bama found its guy? It has. The open spring ball, there was a competition between uh, James Brockermeyer, former four-star in the 2021 class from uh, Fort Worth, Texas, and Parker Brailsford, uh, the transfer from Washington, who's been a part of the King and DeBoer, Nick Sheridan system, helped the Huskies win the Joe Moore Award this past season. He played in 15 games, including 13 as the starting center. Brailsford also uh, helped the Huskies to a Pac-12 championship and a college football playoff appearance in that national championship matchup against Michigan. But the battle started with these two. But according to close sources to the situation and close to us here at TDA, James Brockermeyer has taken the lead in the center position. He's taken the lead. He is the starting center right now. Beat out Parker Brousford. James Brockermeyer at Brockermeyer has beat out Brousford for the starting center position. This is what's been vetted to me disclosed to me from trusted, credible sources inside the program. Brock is the guy at the center position, and uh, this is awesome for him. I mean, here's a young man that, keep in mind, when he signed his national letter of intent for the University of Alabama in the 2021 class, he and his brother, Tommy Brockemeyer, were both injured. When they signed, coming from high school, they were both injured. One guy was on crutches. The other brother had was riding on a knee scooter. When they signed their national letter of intent to play for the Crimson Tide, their dad, Blake Brockermeyer, was a former All-American offensive tackle at the University of Texas, and he played nine seasons in the National Football League. Of course, Tommy Brockermeyer, the former five-star, he ended up transferring back home to Texas to play for TCU. James stayed put at Alabama. James Brockermeyer has two SEC championship rings. That's 2021 
and this past season, 2023. And so James, who has added weight, James, who has added muscle, James, who is extremely intelligent, highly cerebral. I remember the conversation the media had with Chris uh, Kaplovich, offensive line coach, and Coach Chris Cap mentioned how smart James is, how cerebral James is, how quickly James has picked up this offense extremely fast. Uh, he was a guy that, you know, sometimes on the offensive line, you know this, Ian, I, the offensive line position is one where it takes time to develop. I, it takes time to mature. You don't see too many freshmen at Alabama start there on the offensive line, you don't see too many of them. Now, yes, you do have those rare moments where you have a big Andre Smith that'll start at left tackle as a freshman because he's just built different and he just gets it. I mean, there are times where you'll see a guy like big Cam Robinson who comes out of high school as a five-star with typewriter feet. He just gets it. He just understands it, just moves well. You may have a guy like a Jonah Williams, 2016, who may start at right tackle with great footwork. But you just don't often see a freshman, especially Alabama, start on the offensive line. So that's a position where you have to grow into, you have to develop into. And James Brockermeyer, he has grown, he has developed, he has gotten better. And this is very huge for him seeing how he has impressed Kagan DeBoer, he has impressed the coaching staff, he has pushed his way into being a starter at the center position. And like I said, it took Brock some time. It took Brock some time, but it looks like he's now ready to be a starter. He's ready to be an impact player. He's ready to be a marquee communicator. He is ready to be that guy at the center position. When it comes down to helping Alabama win a national championship, you had William Vallejos as that guy in 2009. I also believe in 2011, Vallejos was that guy. 2012, Barrett Jones was that guy. 2015, Ryan Kelly was that guy. 2017, uh, Bradley Bozeman was that guy. 2020, Landon L.D., Lon Moore Dickerson was that guy. And now it seems like James Brockermeyer is saying it's my turn to have this piece here of the pie. But in terms of Parker Brousford, what becomes of him? He could remain at Alabama as the backup center. We'll see. Or does he choose to pursue the transfer portal once it opens back up on April 15th? We will see what happens but as of right now what has been disclosed to me from trusted vetted sources james brockermeyer has taken the lead he's the guy he is the starting center right now for the university of alabama football program we're going to take a break right here folks from the show don't touch that down we're just getting you started here on a monday upon our return we're going to go on the phone lines we're going to grab your calls your thoughts your conversations we want to hear from you light us up with how you're feeling right after this Touchdown Alabama is a fully independent outlet that covers all things Alabama football. Founded in 2007 when Nick Saban arrived, we have been here through the entire Nick Saban era. In this new era, now is the perfect time to stay up to date on everything Alabama football and know what's going on, including everything that's going on with recruiting. Our website at touchdownalabama.com will always keep you in the know on everything that's going on with the Crimson Tide. You can also get breaking news notifications with our app. We have over 100,000 followers on Facebook, over 60,000 on Twitter, nearly 30,000 on Instagram, over 30,000 on TikTok, and we're constantly growing. Also, be sure to become a part of this rapidly growing venture and subscribe to TouchdownAlabama.com to get inside and premium information on the team as well as recruiting inside the state of Alabama. We are constantly adding to our premium subscription package, so be sure to lock in now. Remember the taste of Grandma's delicious sweets? Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes brings back those precious memories with just one bite. Each cake made from scratch. 
They make the perfect dessert to share with family and friends for any occasion, and ordering is easy. Visit Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Click the online store and shop. Then pick up your fresh cake at the kitchen in downtown Homewood. Order yours online at Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes, making memories from scratch. Here we go, folks, for back rocking and rolling to the action from the break. Hot and show on the streets. Talking your Bama football news in my own words. Yours truly, Stephen Smith of TDA. Happened to be here on Monday. Bama men's basketball dancing on with those shoes to the final four of the NCAA tournament. First time in school history. Greg Byrne, if you can hear me, where is the cement? to start working on the new arena. We gotta get this thing built here, Greg. We gotta get this thing built here. But, Bama, in the final four, we go to the phone lines to grab your calls. Call segment brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang, 205-448-1358. Number to call in to let your voice be heard, 205. 205- 448-1358. We take this call. You're live on the show. What's happening? How we feel? And state your name. And where you calling from? Steve, what up with you, man? This is Jay from Florence. Jay, man, what's going on, brother? How you feeling? Man, Kaylin Clark out there balling, dog. I-, I hate to bring it to the show, Steve, but ooh, we that girl out there doing her thing, Steve. I- I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, man, but uh, what, what's this, what's this weird news, like like like, like rumors on other Bama channels and stuff? I hate to bring it to you, but I got to ask you about like like the Brad the the Parker dude like sitting now like is he hurt or like we just don't know? I mean, r- right now he he wasn't injured for the scrimmage. Uh, new reports are saying that. You know, he wasn't injured, but wasn't seen out there, hasn't been seen at practice. There's no report on whether he's been hurt or not. I'm just I'm just being told that Brockermeyer just beat him out. I'm saying, so is he going to be a big baby about it, get beat out, then transferred, all of that? You know what I'm saying? Because if he – we really don't need no bad mojo right now, Steve. I, I mean, at, 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 at this point, at this point, Jay, if you're gonna if you're gonna transfer, then, then, then go ahead and, and just do so. I mean, Brockermeyer stayed here, worked his tail off, been developed, uh, didn't jump ship when Coach Saban retired, got himself in the right position to be a starter. The kid's highly smart. I mean, uh, if it's if it's Brockermeyer, let's just let's just let Brockermeyer roll with it, man. See, can you feel it, man? Can you feel the love? Like, like this is what I've been complaining about, Steve. It just feel like the love for Alabama. When you did you hear the bar on the on the interview earlier, man? Like that man love our school. Our players in the interviews, they love this school, man. Like we done weeded out all the the bad energy. Maybe the saving 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 retiring was a good thing, man. Because I, I, I personally, you know what I'm saying. I, I feel like the love for Alabama is back at Alabama. And you go I feel like we're gonna see it on the field. It's gonna be a bunch of creative play calling that we've been begging for. And uh, and I think this uh Womack dude, he gonna he gonna send the boys. I think he gonna blitz them a lot. But roll tide, I love y'all, man. Appreciate uh, Jay let's go find from the boat, baby. Let's go find the boat. Absolutely. Appreciate Jay calling in from Florence. I agree. And it's like when Saban was here, at first, it was all of that love and that excitement. But then, as Bama grew, Bama football kind of became more of a business, less about the excitement, less about the love, less about the passion, less about the tradition. It became more of a business. Now, with this new fresh blood in here of Kalen to board his staff, it's become more exciting again. It's become more about the love again, the passion again, and the pageantry again, and it's Bama being back hungry again to prove itself. So that's what I'm enjoying more than anything. But we grab this call. You're live on the show. What's happening? How we feel? And state your name and where you calling from. Um, Hunter from Dothan, Alabama. How we feeling? Yeah, how are you? Doing well, doing well. What's on yeah. your mind? 
Well, what have you heard in regards to wide receiver recruiting? Uh, I know we got some guys, you know, scheduled to, to visit, but any real intel on some guys that may be um, close to committing? Well, right, well, right, right now, the, the only guy that is committed right now is the is the Derek Smith kid from Southside High School in Selma. There, there could be some more on the pipeline here as we continue. I know that Alabama's working diligently and trying to get Jamie French, the wide receiver from Jacksonville, Florida, to recommit and get back on board. He decommitted when uh, Saban announced the retirement. I know that Jamie French and, Watt and uh, Ryan Williams are close friends, so that's a name that Alabama wants to get back on board here by – in the in the weeks to come, in the month, in the in the day, or in the weeks to come, the months to come, we should see more wide receivers start to trend toward Alabama, especially with how uh, Courtney Morgan's been out there, Jamarcus Shepard's been out there. Uh, these guys have been working this recruiting trail. Yeah, you know, we know that I'm a big recruiting guy. I like recruiting. I, I like following it. Um, I mean, we know that, that Nick Saban's the best to ever do it. But you, I've got to say, Kalen DeBoer has thoroughly impressed me with his recruiting efforts, even this far. And it's still early. And, you know, he's getting guys, you know, that are very highly coveted. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm just impressed by, you know, the whole staff and what the whole staff has been able to do um, this early in the process, you know, with the new staff. And so, um, so yeah, and I'm – I mean, back to what your comment, the last caller in your comment was about the, everybody not being excited about the program when um, Nick, Nick Saban was there. I think I think that is true to some extent, but I'm a huge Alabama fan. I'm always excited every season. Um, and I just think that, you know, it might have been more business-like, but, hey, that's what won championships. So I, I think that's what we all should, you know, kind of care about is championships no matter how you get it done. Absolutely. It's about winning championships here with the program is concerned. Appreciate Hunter calling in from Doth and giving us his thoughts there on the show. So what I was saying by the comment was it was early on in the Nick Saban era, it was all in unison, right, excitement. It was all in unison uh, energy. It was all in unison uh, enthusiasm. And that's from the coaches to the players to the administration to the fans to, to everybody, right? But then, as Alabama started winning and the expectations started growing, uh, as the expectations do, they grow. Then, from the players' aspect that was coming in, it became less of excitement and just more of just business, right? The coaches that came into Bama, it became less of excitement, the tradition of Bama, the pageantry of Bama. And it became more of where it's just business. I'm coming to Bama to bump up my resume. I'm coming to Bama to enhance my chances of being a head coach somewhere in the NFL. And I think now with uh, you got coaches here that are about the pageantry, that are about the excitement, that are about the tradition, that are about the enthusiasm. And you got players here that are about the same thing. You got that sheer tangible love, the sheer tangible competitiveness, the sheer tangible fire in this program. And you have a Bama that wants to prove itself again. Because if you look at a lot of the national talking heads out there, they're not putting Bama in the national championship discussion. Now, they're not putting Bama in there. They've got Georgia in there. Some have Ohio State in there. Some have, you know, just different programs in there. But nobody's really putting Bama in that conversation. And that's great because Bama's in a place where now it can rise up and be like, oh, we're still Bama. It has something to prove now. And Bama with something to prove has always been the most, the most dangerous side of Crimson Tide football. But cool call topic here, folks. Bama men's basketball in that final four for the first time in program history. Eli, I got a chance to watch Bama versus Clemson on Saturday. 
Boy, it had a football game feeling. But man, them guys on the court was getting. Mark Sears had 23. His mom was loving every minute of it. I think Pringle finished with what, 10, seven rebounds? I think, did, did, did Pringle have a double double? I think Pringle finished with 10 and 10 and seven assists. You had Grant Nelson, who did what he needed to do. Griffin was out there being Rylan Griffin. Like, it was awesome. It was awesome. Eli mentioned how fitting it was to beat Clemson by a touchdown. It did have a football feel to it, Eli. It did, didn't it? You beat Clemson by a touchdown, 89-82. It did have a football feel to it. So, where'd it go by Nate Oates? The champion of the of the West region. He's in the final four. They play UConn this weekend, don't they, Eli? They play UConn. So this will be the rematch of the 2004 Elite Eight when Antoine Petway and that group failed to Richard Hamilton and UConn, that group, okay, that went on to eventually win the NCAA tournament. So a bit of a rematch here from uh, 20 years ago. When you look at Bama taking on UConn in the Final Four, but we take another break right here, folks. We'll touch that death when we get back. We look at a uh, side of the ball, special teams, that kick return and punt return aspect. Could Bama have a freshman be the next dynamic return man? We'll talk about that after this. We're out here at Alumni Hall in Tuscaloosa. Oh yeah, this, oh, no. Gotta get this. Gotta get one of these right here. Can't rock that bam without this shirt right here, fresh pomo. You gotta also rock the all paint. Like Kanye West right there. Keychains, gotta get you some keychains. University of Alabama keychains. I'm telling you, if you are a diehard Alabama fan and you're looking for some big time apparel, this place has got everything. We're talking shirts, shoes, sweatshirts, hoodies, cups, mugs, keychains. If you're just a Todd fan that has an itch to get more apparel, get more swag in your game. You come right here at Alumni Hall in Tuscaloosa, right here in Midtown Village. And also you can shop online. The link is in the description to get your gear right here at Alumni Hall. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. All right, folks, here we go. Back into the action for, uh, back into the action here from the break on the hottest show on the streets. I'm one form for Bama. Football news in my own words, George Truly, Stephen Smith of TDA, my man Eli Walker in the production studio. Continue hitting that subscribe button, tapping the like button, getting those like levels up, hitting the thumbs up on the show. Daily Super Chat Go, $100. Daily Super Chat Go, 100 bucks right there. We appreciate that from you. And uh, you know, it's crazy, man. The 2023 Bama football team gets to the college football playoff in the Final Four. Alabama men's basketball in the Final Four. How about that? <laughs> How about that? Phone lines open, 205-448-1358. Well, not the phone lines are open, my bad. I got a bit ahead of myself there. We're going to topic two of the conversation. Got way ahead of myself there. But topic two of the conversation here, folks. We're looking at the return game, special teams for Alabama football. The Crimson Tide has not had that dynamic, elite, hold your breath, make some things happen, take it to the crib, electrifying return specialist since Jalen Waddle. It's been a while. In the Alabama football era, we've seen some of the most dynamic 
kickoff return, punt return specialist, right? Whether you look at David Deuce Palmer, whether you look at Freddie Millens, uh, whether you look at Tyrone Prothrow, uh, Cyrus Jones, Christian Jones, uh, um, you have the likes of Javier Arenas, you have the likes of, uh, like I said, Jalen Waddle, Eddie Jackson. Uh, you got a lot of you got a lot of guys that return kicks and punts here in the Alabama football era. But who's that next guy that when they touch the ball, you are holding your breath because you know something big is about to happen? Now, good news for Alabama. They have a number of guys that can do it. For those guys on screen right here, you got uh, Kendrick Law, who's a utility knife. He can do it. You got Jeremy Bernard, the transfer from Washington. He can do it. You got Cole Adams. He could do it. Uh, Jaron Hamilton wide receiver. He'll get a look in there. And then you got Jalen Mbakwe, the freshman. Uh, he can do it as well. You got quite a few guys that can return kicks, that can return punts here. You look at Alabama football, but who's the guy that gives you the best opportunity? Who's the guy that will be the most trustworthy? Who's the guy that when the ball hits his hands, you're like, oh, mama, get the popcorn ready. I can't go use the bathroom. I can't pee right now. I can't use the bathroom right now. This guy is on the kickoff return. This guy's on the punt return. Because if I go use the bathroom, I feel like I'm going to miss something that's absolutely great. Who is the guy that can provide you with that? So, Starting this, uh, as we look at here, uh, Kendrick Law, first and foremost, Kendrick Law can provide that. You're going to have to give him the ball 10 to 15 times a game because of how he's a utility knife. He can get the ball out the backfield as a running back. He can go in motion as a wide receiver, catch screen passes. I mean, he can catch the ball running routes. He can block. But having this man on kickoff return or punt return, when the ball gets into this man's hands, he can work in space. Kendrick Law can work in space. So that's something. When you look at Jeremy Bernard, the transfer, he did this at Washington, returning kicks and punts. He also did it at Michigan State. And he can move in space. And he can cut and set up blocks and, and make plays happen. So there's that. Cole Adams did this in high school, so he's firmly capable of doing it. But the reason why I kind of want to pull out Jalen Mbakwe, I think Mbakwe, the former five-star from Clay Chalkville High School, Mbakwe, the 2023 Class 6A state champion, I think Mbakwe, uh, Eli, would be perfect for this. And here's why. You want the guys that have not made a name for themselves yet in college to start making that name on special teams. You put Mbakwe out there. Keep in mind, in high school, he played quarterback. He played wide receiver. He played defensive back. He was also a return man. And Mbakwe was electric at all of those spots. <laughs> he was must-see television. He was, I got to get to the game on Friday night because this kid is something else for Clay Chalkfield. So, I think if you have Mbakwe returning punts, the moment that ball hits his hands, it's going to be exciting because he's, he's going to be able to make moves in the open field. He's going to be able to make guys miss. He's going to be able to take it to the house. I've been told close, vetted sources here, if they can put their finger on right now, who would be the two return guys? They have it as Bernard and Mbakwe. Main two. Jeremy Bernard, Jalen Mbakwe. I mean, Eli, you got a chance to, to cover a, a few Clay Chalkville games this, this past season, this last year. What, what do you think about Mbakwe returning punts, Eli? I mean, what, what, what do you think about that? Jalen Mbakwe, back there, returning punts. I mean, uh, that would be that would be kind of exciting to watch that. I mean, I, I'm just saying, him back there returning punts would be something that we would all be kind of going, man, if he ever takes one of the crib. Eli writes in here, he's one of the most explosive high school guys. I've, and, 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 and he was, Eli, he was the most explosive high school players that you've covered. 
So to have him return punts, I'm just saying, it'll be something to watch. It'll be something to keep your eyes on. And we may get a chance to see that in the upcoming season. But Bama hasn't had a guy that electric since Jalen Waddle, hopefully in Bakway, brings life to that position. But we take a break right here, folks. We'll touch that down. Upon our return, we get back into the phone lines. We get your calls, your thoughts, your conversations. We definitely want to hear from you, the Bama fans, after this. Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Whitwill Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care. In support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WhitwillSports.com and get your title towel today. This is Chris Rogers, 2009 National Champion. You are listening to the baddest, when I say the baddest, sports show in the state of Alabama. In my own words, you know, yours truly, Touchdown Alabama Magazine, don't touch that dial. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. Folks, we're back into the action from the break. Hottest show on the streets here, talking Bama. Football news, in my own words, George truly. Steven Smith of TDA got Bama men's basketball in the Final Four. Got the women's NCAA tournament going on right now, the Elite Eight, where you got uh, Iowa versus LSU, Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese Part Two. Then you got UConn and USC. Got Juju going up against the whole UConn squad. I mean, Eli, for the first time in a while, or ever, you got the women's side of the NCAA tournament receiving more conversation than the men's side. Them girls balling, though. Caitlin Clark, baller. Angel Reese, baller. Blue Jay Johnson, baller. Le Juju at USC, baller. Them girls at UConn, baller. So they have earned that. They have earned to have that conversation as more entertaining than the men's NCAA tournament going on right now. But phone lines open, 205-448-1358. Number to call in to let your voice be made known on the show, 205 448 1358. One more time, 205 448 1358. Definitely want to hear from you, but um, as you're getting your thoughts to call in, it is A Day Month, Bama Nation. We've made it A Day Month. It's April, right? April, April 13th, the spring game. Brian Denny, Tuscaloosa, 3 p.m. Central Time. ESPN will have the call. You got the team of Greg McElroy, Dave Pash, Bobby McGrath, they're on the call. You got A Day on April 13th. Of course, we hear TDA will be there. We'll be right there on the scene, providing you all that you need in the spring game. We'll have our eyes on uh, things to report on, document, watch, cover in the spring game. So we've made it right here. A day month is officially upon us now. But taking our final break here on the show, don't touch that dab. When we get back, we wrap things up with this discussion. As much as we love and value and appreciate Alabama football, if Nate Oates and men's basketball wins the NCAA tournament, would a basketball title mean more? We'll talk about that after this. I'm Malachi Moore. And you're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith on Touchdown Alabama YouTube channel. 
Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. What's going on? This is Benny Bice. I'm the founder and owner of Touchdown Alabama. And you guys are supporting one of the only independent outlets covering Alabama football today. No other sports, no networks, just Alabama football. Roll, tie, roll. All right, folks, here we go. Back to the action here from the break on a Monday. Getting that work week started off for you correctly in my own words, George truly. Stephen Smith of TDA. Happy to be here on this evening. Got my man Eli Walker in the production studio. Happy to have you, the Bama fans, with us for the ride. We tidy up loose ends here with this discussion on the show, and it's uh, you know as much as we enjoy it, as much as we, we we're happy, we're pleased with Alabama football and winning national championships on the gridiron. If Alabama men's basketball, if Nate Oates and this team pulls out a national championship in this tournament on the court, would a basketball tournament championship, would a basketball national title mean more than a football national title? And the reason why I bring this question up is a lot of you probably grew up diehard men's basketball fans. A lot of y'all grew up Wimp Sanderson, a lot of y'all want to see a Final Four championship come under Mark Godfrey. It didn't happen. A lot of us want to see Anthony Grant do something. That didn't happen. Avery Johnson came in talking a lot of good. Bama going to be the next Duke. Bama going to be the next Michigan State. And aside from, you know, Colin Sexton's floater, to beat Texas A&M to get us into the big dance that year. You know, Avery, not much there. And Nate Oates, who came as a relative unknown from Buffalo five years ago, and in five years has been exceptional for Bama men's basketball to the point where it's in the Final Four. So uh, would a basketball title mean more than a football title. I, I I think it would just to kind of show the world uh, Bama is officially more than a football school. I think a basketball national title will finally put the cap on Bama's an everything school. I remember Eli going back to 2012, and I want to tell the story, if, if I can. 2012, but 2011, 2012 ac- athletic sports year was such a special year for the University of Alabama and for me because I was a student at that time. This was the fall of my freshman year, going into the spring of my freshman, going into the spring semester of my freshman year. And at that time, 2011, we remember football won a national title that year. 2011, 2012, so football won a national title. Softball under Patrick Murphy won a national title. Jackie Trainer got the girls to a national championship. And then you had gymnastics with uh, Sarah Patterson. They won a national championship that year. Men's golf under Coach Sewell won a national championship that year. The tennis team won a national championship that year. The wheelchair basketball team won a national championship that year. And then Bama men's basketball under Anthony Grant finally made the NCAA tournament. So 2011, 2012, that was just a very special time in the Alabama athletics program, athletics department. But to have men's basketball win the final four this year and win a national championship, I mean, if you think Bama Nation's overbearing, don't let Nate Oates walk out of here with the national championship. It's going to get way more overbearing. 
I, I, if Nate Oates walks out of this thing with the title, Eli, like, Lank is going to be real, real. If Nate Oates walks out of here with a title. Like, we, we, we enjoy Bama football. No doubt. But if Bama basketball walks out of here with a natty, like the full-on hatred that other programs have for Alabama, it's going to reach a even more all-time high. So, yes, a, a title for men's basketball would mean more. It would mean more for Alabama, not a football school. It would mean more for more jealousy of other programs to be inflated in Alabama. And it would mean more because it would just give you, the Alabama football fan base, something even more to be excited about and proud of. A national championship in men's basketball. But as always, Bama fans, you want the best in news, notes, material, conversation, entertainment. You can get this by accessing the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. You download the app from the iPhone app store if you're rocking Team Apple. Google Play Store if you got the Android phone for your audio needs. Check us out. iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn Radio, Overcast.fm, our iHeartRadio. We got you covered right there. The good and gracious Lord sees fit. I'll be back on uh, Wednesday, continuing the conversation that is Bama football. Got to give a shout out to you, the Bama fans, for all the love, for the phone calls, for the YouTube chatting, for you making this your spot, your show for all things Bama football. Got to appreciate my man Eli Walker in the production studio. Till next time, folks, husbands, love your wives. Wives appreciate value. Those husbands, children continue doing the right thing, fun thing, smart thing, good thing, legitimate thing, too. Not be bored there. Get that school work in also. Get you those three hearty meals a day, those three great laughs a day. You protect yourself. You protect the loved ones around you. Till next time, folks, I'm your man Stephen Smith, and you've been listening to my own words. 